Welcome to the stories of the 2016 Boscobs Berks Jazz Fest. And the, the stories, well, they can't even begin without the beginning. That's where you start. And that's where John Ernesto comes in. You're the general manager, and I like to say founder, and I know you always change no, that no, and no, say, no, that's no, not no. the case. But you've been there from the get-go. Yeah, I've been involved since the beginning, uh, since uh, 26 years ago. I was uh, through my job at the newspaper as marketing director. I got on board when they came to us that they were going to do this festival. Who came to you? It was the Arts Council. Okay. A gentleman by the name of Bill Royston was the executive director. And it was Bill and um, people from the Visitors Bureau, which at that time was part of the chamber. Oh. And, so, and the, some hotel people in Boy well, Missing. It was the Sheraton, the Inner Reading, a few hotels. So anyways, they came to, a, a, to me at the Eagle and asked me to get involved to help with putting a marketing plan together and working with them. So we did. and. Uh, so I was involved in the beginning in that way, and then the second year I got more involved with some, as some things changed, and then by the third year I was like co-chairman with Bob Kerper. Oh, I remember, remember Bob. Bob. Yeah. Uh, and then the fourth year they asked me to take it over. Bob didn't want to do it. He was just kind of like filling the void. There was some changes in management on, on the on the arts council side. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, so I said, yeah, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> give it a shot. And 26 <laughs> years later, it's, yeah, it's it huge. Yeah, it was a learning curve. So <laughs> I have to ask you, though, you, you talked about when it first started, it was um, the Arts Council, the Visitors Bureau, and hotels. Mm -hmm. So was the intent of bringing this jazz fest here, was the intent music, or was music the vehicle and the intent was economic impact? It, it was a cultural uh, art experience. That's, so we're trying to find something okay. in the time frame when the hotels were quiet, not right. very busy. Right. So they're looking for a cultural experience, you know, art experience, a music experience. So that's what that's what kind of was the. Uh, and Bill had had a history of doing this at Penn's Landing, and in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So he had some expertise in you know putting a festival together. And uh, so that's that's what that's how it kind of ended up being a jazz festival. And it was a weekend event, yeah, was, right? Yeah, first year was a, a weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I, I could presume it was successful, or it wouldn't have expanded to ten days. Yeah, it, it it was successful the first year. Second year had some challenges. It was struggling along. You know, you get to that the beginning stages where it either goes one way or the other, mm -hmm. and. Um, so when I got involved seriously in the fourth year, I said, you know, we really got to look at expanding it a little bit. Right. And keeping our options open and everybody was willing to work. And so we kind of got the, the footing solid and we went to Thursday night. We started oh, doing a jam at the peanut bar. And then um, on the 10th year, I, we came up with the idea, the Arts Council, we sat down and said, why don't we do 10 days? Because the hotel- <laughs> brainstorm was that well, yours? Well, yeah, the hotels okay. liked it because they were busy so on the one weekend, now mm -hmm. I gave them two weekends. So that's how it got to be 10 days. And the, and the initial intent was for it to be 10 days just that one year. Oh. But it was so successful, the hotel says, everybody said, let's keep this format moving. So it's been 10 days since the 10th anniversary. So switching from the music to the economy, it's had a positive impact in Berks County for hotels and restaurants? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, there's been studies, and the economic impact on, the, on Berks County is you know, roughly depends who does the county, but it's eight to ten million dollars wow. for two for those ten days. Wow! You know, because of the hotels and you know, all the how they figure those things out, and you know, the restaurants, the food, this, and all the trickle down, how it, all, it impacts everybody. But now the challenge is a ten day festival. It started what 16 years ago. It went to right. ten days. How do you keep the artists, because there, there are perennial favorites for mm -hmm. the Boscovs Berks Jazz Fest year after year. And you would think if an artist for 20 years comes to the same venue and does this act, it, they would get tired, it mm -hmm. would get old, but that enthusiasm doesn't wane here. So what's going on with the Boscovs Berks Jazz Fest? Well, I mean, 
it's become a real destination for music fans. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some favorites who come back, if not every year, every other year. Right. But we always bring them back in a different context. They're doing something different. Oh, okay. So it's fresh. We try to keep the festival fresh. Um, the people trust us. They know they're coming whether you and I are playing. You know, it's like they're coming to the festival because they trust us that all the shows are going to be good. There's going to be great acts. And they'll so, be full. And, you know, and, and so they want to be part of it. Right. You know, it's just kind of like a, it's kind of like a jazz cruise on land. You know, where where you go these jazz cruises now, where you have all these artists. Mm -hmm. where, you know, mm -hmm. people come here and they, it, it, it's the same kind of feel. Because it is the art, energy. It's a high yeah, energy the, festive. The artists thing. mingle with the fans, whether yes. after a show, but they're at a restaurant or at, at you walk through the Crown lobby, you know, the hotel lobbies, and. The artists are there, so there's a lot of interaction. And people like that. And a staple, I believe, is the jams. The yeah, jazz yeah. jams, the mm -hmm. midnight jams, uh, mm -hmm. where it, it's amazing the number of artists who've done one or two shows already oh, and then sure. show up at that midnight jam. Yeah. And what a party. Yeah, those are, those have turned into... Uh, this year, be, they, we moved them to uh, Building 24. Oh, uh, the jams. Yeah, the jams are going to be Building 24. They're better. They can accommodate them better uh, mm -hmm. as far as production, get people in, and... So uh, last year we tried to we put a tent up at the at the oh, crown, the crown Plaza. I guess. yeah tried yes. that but the weather was kind of iffy and it was around the pool area we had a person end up in a pool and I so, can't imagine that John. So, so, so. <laughs> It's a long story, but anyways. <laughs> so when you work with the artist, and you have developed relationships with the artists, they're they're yes. friends, yes, truly yes. your friends. Yes. Um, they'll visit your house. All of the artists speak extraordinarily yeah. highly of you, John. Well, that's, that's because of everybody else, though. I mean, we have all the volunteers and everything that everyone does. They, we, we have always said this many times, and I'm sure I said this to you before when we did it previous interviews, was uh, our simple philosophy is, you know, take care of the artists, take care of the fans, and everything else will take care of itself. So. That is a simple statement, yeah. and it does hold true. Yes, it, it does. But if you will, John, take us behind the scenes. What's your biggest challenge? Uh, well, the biggest challenge, I mean, so, there's several areas. The festival like, runs in segments. The challenge of putting it together, getting mm -hmm. the artists lined up, mm -hmm. coordinating all the venues with the hotels, and then there's the production element, which Gary Spencer coordinates for the festival. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a whole nother challenge. You know, there's so much work that goes into that. When the festival gets here, I don't want to say it's anticlimactic for me, but it's like... You, Are you taking that, a deep breath and relaxing at the festival? No, because you're busy <laughs> trying to make sure everything's okay. Right. But, you know, you get to that point, you know, it's, uh, it's like we always joke when, like two weeks ago when we, when we went on sale with tickets, we said, well, can't change. We can't turn back now. We're in. So. Are there last minute changes? There have been over the uh, years. Yes, absolutely. There's, uh, there's big acts. Last minute changes. There's a big act uh, that we just found out that it had it has to cancel because of health reasons. Oh. And uh, so we're in the process of uh, putting all that together. Um, what well, are your anchor shows this year? Well, the we open uh, at the Double Tree on Friday night, April first, with. Uh, um, Manhattan Transfer and Take Six. Wow. And then the last wow. show is the big gospel show with Donnie McClurk and Kirk Whalum. So, and this year we have uh, Mavis Staples, we, we have uh, Chick Corea and, and Bela Fleck doing a show together. So we have a lot of unusual things. We have a, a group of an all-star show that's doing the music of James Brown. It's called Jazz Meets James. Oh my goodness. So there's a lot of interesting things happening this year. And that's what you talk about, changing up the acts a Absolutely, little bit yeah. and mixing you, you up the genre. You gotta keep it fresh and, mm -hmm. and, and, and diversified. There's different genres of music. We had this kid, uh, Joey Alexander, come. He's 12 years old from Indonesia. He lives in, in the States now, but he's a child prodigy piano player. He's up for a Grammy Award. He's got nominated for a Grammy. He's coming? Yeah, he's coming. He's a, he's a trio, plays piano. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's he's 12? 12 years old. Wow. Yeah, Joey Alexander, wow. his name is. Go out, anybody sees, just go to YouTube and check him out. I mean, it's amazing. There's always a treat at yeah. Moscow's Berks Jazz yeah. Fest. There's always something new. And we are very, very, very grateful for your time and energy and what you bring to the festival because well, you're passionate you. and devoted. So thanks for yeah, your time, it's, it's, John. It's a, it's, a great, it's a great team of people. Yeah. I mean, you're part of the team. Everybody does something in the community to help get the word out and get people enthused and people to come. Right, it's, right. 
you know, we, everybody has to be pulling in the right direction, the same direction. So It's contagious. Yeah. It's, it's easy to jump on yeah. board. So please do. It's the Boscov's Berks Jazz Fest. It's April 1st. April through 1st through April 10th. April 1 through 10. Make your reservations and get your tickets now. Thank you.